Now, since the 2023 presidential election and the perceived failure of that ballot to meet the hopes and aspirations of many Nigerians, the great thinkers in society have started to reflect more and to increasingly question the collapse of values in Nigeria in a bid to reshape and rebuild the country for the better. And who can blame them after witnessing the hideously corrupt, buccaneering and bullying style of competing Nigerian politicians as well as that of their supporters. So, led by Professor Patutomi, these remnants of concerned professionals and new tribe of patriots, as they call themselves, have been conducting a stock take of Nigeria's collapsing values. And they pull no punches when they say that this country is doomed unless it seeks and entrenches a new value system that incorporates the best that is good and honest in the world, a belief in the worth of and dignity of every human being, equity and justice for all, integrity, discipline, patriotism, and a sense of responsibility. But how does such a pursuit fit into a world in which the hustle and bustle of daily survival dominates? They look and say, we can trust these people. You can send Nigerian delegations to New York everywhere, invite investors, as we have been doing recently, but they will finish and will come up with nothing because they may say nice things to be polite in front of us, but they say, that country of crooks. Why do I want to go and put my money in that country? So, until we begin to leave certain values and people see it in a national character. Get into an important national conversation, the kind of conversation that would enable us to uh, determine what our shared values are. Uh, that would give us the opportunity to, you know, collectively uh, determine our aspiration, that is our national vision, and uh, enable us to say, I actually love being Nigerian as much as the person who is from the South South says, I love being well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the respected professor of political economy and founder of the Center for Values and Leadership, the rather cerebral Professor Patu Tomi. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Great pleasure. Would it be fair to say that core values in Nigeria have been so eroded that the country operates in a moral vacuum, or would that be too much of a, generation, a generalization or... Well, too harsh a statement. Well, I, I'm not sure that one can say that that is too harsh. In, in the sense that you almost feel like you're living in the jungle in Nigeria. And in the jungle, life is, as a Hobbesian view of it is, goes, brutish, short. You know, um, sometimes you, you wonder if there isn't certain kind of collective madness. I, I, I actually once joked about a uh, country functioning like um, an asylum in which the patients had taken charge and are subjecting the psychiatrists to some treatment. <laughs> you know, because really you wonder why would anybody go this far to do something that could be done differently and that would yield greater. But there is such incredible suboptimization from the way that we have come to define what is good and what is possible. Mm. Because there are no laws. Look, human beings are creatures of restraint more or less forced on them. We would all be animals if we didn't have boundaries, that there were consequences for going beyond. Right. I, I'm just. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm just a little concerned with the way your microphone is fixed. But I, I need to ask the gallery. We can hear him, can we? Okay. Please go on. Okay. Y you know, uh, because I mean, uh, think about it this way. And, and this is real. I'll tell the story. Um, one Easter Sunday, many years ago, or well, maybe like eleven years ago, Chibika Mechi was still governor in Rivers at the time. So it gives a sense. Lamido Sanusi was governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I was on a flight going to London. Mm. I was actually sitting next to uh, uh, the late Ashiru, and Mr. Ashiru was finance, uh, foreign minister at the time. And the airport was so chaotic in Lagos because like seven, eight governors, I remember Mimiko was on that flight, quite a number of them. 
ostensibly they were supposed to be going for some exim bank meeting in new york on power i'm not sure what they had to do with power but anyway they were going and the airport was so chaotic you would think there was a, a civil war you know literally going on there and we get on this airplane and we land in the uk and everybody so like human beings picks up their briefcases and, and we, get, we get in the elevator and i begin to laugh and i think it was amishi who said to me okay tell us what do you want to say why can't you behave this way in lagos so it seems to me that there is some water that we drink on flights that just does something to that part of our brain and we land in lagos or abuja or wherever it is and we have these funny things that drive us egotic stuff and we were in london we saw how things were running and we come here it's chaos things are not working mm. but it's okay because you're a big man so for you the interconnected process of values and development must function fully for nigeria to make progress basically. absolutely i think in fact the biggest challenge we have is that we focus on the wrong things. Look, I've spent a good 40-something years of my adult intellectual life in pursuit of one objective, clear in my head. Why do some communities, societies, or countries, whichever one you choose, thrive and others fail? I've pursued it to every continent on this planet, spent a lot of time wandering around Latin America in mm. my very early days, seeing things the way they were going to Latin America, switched to Southeast Asia, went through all of those countries. Once it's become clear, historians, political scientists, economists, sociologists have come to a certain consensus that there are certain things that are responsible for why progress takes place in human society. One, institutions. Institutions set the boundaries of conduct. Two, very importantly, and I'll just take these two, there are several mm. in a cluster, your values. So, so what are these values that you talk about and how will they be taught? Because as you said, they've clearly been neglected in this country. Yeah. Well, typical ways that they are taught, they are transmitted is in the family, in schools, and um, other kinds of arrangements through which society socializes its members. But the problem, the big problem in Nigeria, is that those who are supposed to teach these things are doing the wrong things. Mm. They say to you, this is the right thing to do, but they do the wrong thing. We are saying, as a tribe of patriots, as you know, people who want themselves to be held accountable, the starting point is personal responsibility. Don't say to anybody, this is how you should do anything. Be held accountable. And I tell you a frightening thing. Mm. About 20 something years ago, uh, there's a, an organization, uh, an NGO called CBI, Con Convention on Business Integrity. CBI was trying to uh, influence society through an initiative in which they wanted business leaders to be able to come out publicly and say, I will not give, I will not take. That is a bribe. At that time, I, I served on the National Council of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. I served on the Council of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, and so on. Anyway, they came to make a presentation to the Council of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce. There were more than 60 of us, leaders of business, in this meeting and they talked about how corruption was destroying nigeria and anybody who can think can see it is there for you to see it looks you in the face and he said look one way we can stop it is if business leaders publicly come out and take a stand and raise their hand hmm. to the whole world to see and say i will not give a bribe i will not take a bribe do you know that of all the people in that room, only the managing director of Cadbury Nigeria PLC at that time, Dr. Christopher Kolade, an engineer who's late now, Kukoi, and myself, only three of us 
were able to say we are willing to do this. I was shocked. But you know what? We've come down nearly a quarter of a century mm. since then, and we can see the damage that not being able to do that has done to the country. And so we're thinking that today, having seen this damage, people should be able to say, I'm a Nigerian, and these are the things that represent being a Nigerian. And was that the, the thrust of this meeting, uh, gathering you had today, people you refer to as the remnants of concerned professionals and a new tribe of patriots? Yes, indeed. Um, we had a keynote, a starting keynote given by Professor um, Anthony Akinwale, uh, left the Vice Chancellor of Augusta University as a priest. And he, he had given a remarkable, uh, um, if you will, um, statement about the problem Nigeria was not really dealing with, a mm. lack of conceptual clarity. When he spoke at, at Dr. Kayodi Fayemi's book launch, at which he said, look, we keep talking about moving forward. That if you are moving forward in the wrong direction, the best thing to do is stop <laughs> and turn around. And he said that Section 2 of the Constitution... But well, you'd have to be aware that you're moving that you, in the absolutely, wrong direction. Absolutely. That's precisely why we're doing this. Right. So let us know that we're moving in the wrong direction. Mm. Because if we're not moving in the, direction, in the wrong direction, a country with the kind of factor endowments that Nigeria has cannot be the poverty capital of the world. Mm. A country with the quality... That's a good point. Yeah. The quality of human beings, 70% of all the doctors of color in the United States of America are Nigerian. And that kind of country cannot be like this. A country that, I mean, people who are, they call it Jack Biden, trying to get out of this place, mm. are in North America and already are perhaps the single most prosperous ethnic nationality community living in North America. Cannot be people whose country is the laughing stock of the world that we are, whether we like to accept it or not. And so something is wrong. Right. What is that thing that is wrong? The problem is that we've not been able to focus on it. Because we have a politics, uh, which Professor Kimwale's uh, uh, um, presentation was brilliant around, that essentially pushes us to reason, emotion, and deeply widens the gap between us and them. Politicians who are unable to think, who are unable to show how their country can make progress, turn to emotion instead of reason, mm. and get young people to hate each other in the name of what ethnic nationality group they may or may not belong to. And, I mean, you can go through the yeah. plethora of problems. and They don't even know that it's wrong. But in the, face, in the face of these things that you talked about, which are very important points you make, and you talked earlier about the people, the person, starting to correct themselves. I mean, who will be the default instrument of this reawakening, this audacious return to the right path of rectitude? I presume it will require leadership. I'm wondering who will be at the top of that pyramid leadership. We, given the fact that, the, you, I mean, you don't have trust in the politicians. We have to hold each other accountable. Mm. And this new tribe has to outline what it is that is valuable, which we agree as Nigerians that we can share. Mm. If we agree to it and we know that the world will respect people who have those values, we hold each other accountable that any one of us who steps out of these boundaries will call out. So if the world sees that there is a tribe in Nigeria of people who you can trust, of people you can stand on their word, of people who respect the freedom of other people, mm. the integrity of systems and processes, the world will want to deal with that tribe. If the world deals with that tribe and ignores the others, there will be an attraction into that tribe. Of others. I, I know your, your Center for Values and Leadership emphasizes values in, in leadership and obviously you're teaching those things that you talked about previously that these values, one of the ways to in, in, impart them is for that to be, to be you know, taught in schools, you know, families and so on and 
um, in school and the subject of values would be codified mm -hmm. so that you know it's at par with subjects like mathematics maybe science and all the rest of it but but doesn't the prospect and I don't know how this rubs you but doesn't the prospect of the state mm. that you criticize defining a set of approved values to be taught in school raise questions for you the same state that's been poisoned for years by corrupt politicians and civil the, the servants. State, the state cannot define your values. The values must come from the heart of the community. Yeah, but you're talking about teaching them in schools that are controlled by the state. It, they don't have to be controlled by the state. They are, they are thought in their families, they are thought, thought leaders influence the direction mm. we're going. The state doesn't sit down. The state can't even organize itself. Can't teach anybody anything, really. The way well, that's that precisely the point. Yeah. So, no, no, so, we're not, nobody, nobody of serious mind will uh, uh, trust the Nigerian state to, to codify anything. In, in fact, talking about my work at the Center for Values in Leadership, part mm. of what I uh, am working on is to get a, uh, uh, a tech company to try and gamify ethics, to, to reduce the teaching of business ethics to games at levels that young people can yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thought, actually. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, uh, messages are very important, right. aren't they? Yeah. If, if we can get Messaging. young people to play these games and through the playing of those games actually learn that you travel further when you are ethical than when you take shortcuts. I, I mean, I, I know you're, you're obviously a great intellectual, um, deeply philosophical, which is one of the reasons we love to talk with you. But you can understand it if some people ask whose morality are we talking about? And the other question, going back all the way to Socrates, mm. is whether, and he never quite answered that question, is whether value can actually be taught. Well, values are imbibed. Mm. And, and that is learning. And, you know, pedagogy is not necessarily... Uh, something that you find a form for transfer of values. Right. Values are so practical in their reality that if you engage in transactions with people and they see that they cannot trust you, that your values are not right, it's very mm. simple. They don't come back to deal with you. This is why Nigeria is poor. Okay. We do what people call 419. And somebody says and rationalizes it mm. and says, hey, look, um, why people cheated us in the past? What's the big deal? We're just going back and cheating them again. Sounds logical. Mm. But it's fundamentally not smart. Not smart because the person that you cheat today and you get away uh, with it. Mm does one of a number of things. He either does not transact again, or if he sees profit in transacting again, mm. he will save himself the danger of losing his money in this 419 arranged, uh, whatever, uh, by hedging. Maybe he buys a product right. that enables him to hedge. What does that do? It increases his transaction costs and you become less competitive relative to some area where those transaction costs do not exist. In the end, you find yourself unable to thrive. And this is why I love the point that, that, that uh, Jared Diamond makes in his study of how societies have failed through human history. Collapse is really fundamentally about a failure of values. Mm. So um, I think that when wise people lead any people, it should be easy to communicate the fact that the possibilities of sustainable prosperity come from values. And, and this is, again, uh, uh, there was a colloquium um, at Harvard back in the mid-90s um, about how values shape human progress. Uh, collo colloquium was inspired by the thoughts of a Remarkable gentleman, my favorite politician, hmm. uh, you know, literally in my American days, uh, who used to be a Harvard professor, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who basically makes the point when he was asked uh, 
what's the difference between a Democrat and a uh, Republican? Say so Republicans are conservatives, uh, Democrats are liberals. And the central conservative truth hmm. is that it is not politics, but culture, your values, that's responsible for the progress of society. However, the central liberal truth is that politics can change a culture and save it from itself. And given that you've mentioned politics, we've got a couple of minutes left before we have to end this very interesting chat. I have to ask you whether you're still listening out for and failing to hear the sound of democracy in Nigeria. Or, I, I, or have things kind of moved on from the last... No, they haven't period. moved on. Um, I have said very clearly that my experience is that Nigeria is not a democracy. In fact, it's in grave danger of going down the path of fascism. And, and you can see some of those things that are uh, signposts of fascism when regulators or broadcast media become instruments of harassment, of freedom of expression, and all of those, you see fascism in progress. If Nigeria doesn't stop this rapid descent into fascism, it'll be a nightmare. So what's the next step now for, for what you were doing today in terms of moving this value system forward? Well, it's first of all, Nigerians, that any alternative to being a people of strong values, of strong institutions, does not exist. We can only end up in Somalia. And I'm sure nobody wants to be Somalia. No, certainly here. don't want that. Okay. So if we don't want to be Somalia, it's time to say to yourselves, do I want to be part of a new tribe? A tribe that respects the dignity of the human person, respects other people. Do tribal tongue may defy in brotherhood we stand. Uh, do you want to be part of your word? Being somebody something, something somebody can take to the bank. Do you want to be a, a nation in which we recognize that collaboration trumps, you know, fussing and fighting. Mm. And Africans. Discord. Discord. Uh, uh, um, you know, Ubuntu. I am because we are. And right now we're tearing everybody apart because we can get a few dollars more. It's not sustainable. And we need a new way. On that note, um, very meaningful words there. I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Pat Utomi. He's a professor of political economy and founder of the Center for Values and Leadership, or Value and Leadership. Thank you very much indeed. Great pleasure.